If you, like me, grew up loving this, but put up with the eye strain that came along with it, you're gonna love this. Hi, welcome back to the shed. This thing here is my first love in gaming. The original Nintendo DNG Game Boy. I was obsessed with this thing in the 90s. I played hours and hours racking up high scores on Tetris, playing Super Mario Land to the end over and over again. Wherever I was, I could have my favorite Nintendo games wherever I went. It was fantastic. And then, a number of years ago, when I got into chiptune music and found out that not only can you make music on these things, you can also modify the screens with a backlit display now, I had to try it. I've actually made loads and loads of these over the years. It's a great modification. I love doing it. I love playing on them. And then I found out recently that not only can you do that, but now you can get an entire replacement LCD unit. So instead of just modifying the existing display, you can remove it, which is brilliant if you've got a faulty unit, and you can put a whole new backlit display in Let's take a look and see how it performs. Right, let's start with a quick history lesson. The original Game Boy LCD did not have a backlight. You needed to be under a lamp like this at just the right angle or out in sunlight to see what was going on on the display. Now this modification uses the original hardware but dismantles it, takes out the reflective film and replaces it with this backlit LED panel. It means that you get exactly the same display all the authenticity but you can play it in the dark and you can do it in a range of colors now this new panel is slightly smaller you can see in the display if i go to the title screen it's slightly smaller it is pixel perfect ratio however because the pixels are smaller the display is slightly smaller so why would you upgrade to this instead of this well let's take a look Okay, so the Game Boy was released in 1989, which means most of these that you lay your hands on were made sometime in the 90s, which means most of these that you come across are around 30 years old, which means that the hardware inside it is also around 30 years old, and the screen is also around 30 years old, which means time has taken its toll on some of these screens. Game Boys got knocked about left, right and centre, and sometimes the display can deteriorate. Now, if I adjust the contrast so that we get a dark display here, we can see two common errors on the screen. Down this side, if I can get the right angle, there is a slight gap, there's a line of pixels that aren't working. And then across the top here, there's also a horizontal line. Now, the thing is, the vertical lines are actually fixable, which means that if it was just the vertical line there, there is a repair, so I could reuse that screen, but the horizontal ones are very difficult. In addition to that, sometimes the layers of the LCD can come apart and renders that entire panel useless, because if you take a look, when you dismantle the Game Boy, the back half is mainly the power and the game running, and on the front is to do with the display and the sound being passed on through the speaker. So this display is permanently attached, it's soldered on, it has this ribbon that goes to the back. So if the display is done, the whole thing is done. And it means that you need to get a replacement Game Boy to get that panel and have a new display. Now I've done, as I said before, a lot of backlight mods over the years. So what that means is I've ended up with a lot of these that don't work. Um, which are just sort of laying there gathering dust. So when I found out you can now actually remove this panel and replace it with a new one, that was what really sold me on this unit. So even though the display is slightly smaller, I was intrigued. I wanted to know what it was like. So let's have a look a bit more in depth at that one. Okay, now I'll start by saying this mod is not for the faint-hearted. What it involves you doing is desoldering the ribbon here and completely removing the LCD unit. Then you've got to desolder this ribbon here and then, I don't know if you can quite see, but at the back there where the main ribbon attaches, there's a whole load of little connections that you need to solder an entirely new ribbon to. The instructions, <laughs> I say instructions, the pictures that were on the eBay listing, I didn't get any instructions. The pictures made it look like this ribbon needed removing, which is what I did and attached the new one. And it was only on further research that I realized what you actually had to do was solder the new ribbon on top of the old one. So not only did I remove the ribbon, but I actually had to resolder it and then attach the new ribbon. Thankfully, it survived the operation and the display itself is superb. Now, even though it's smaller than the original display, 
it's really really crisp so easy on the eye there's no blur in terms of the animation it looks fantastic now I did this for me because I do a lot of music using a software called LSDJ now if I fire that one up got a cartridge here with that installed it's actually quite a detailed display uh, with a lot of numbers on screen and columns so having this kind of display even though it's smaller makes it much much easier to see what's going on on screen when I'm navigating my way around the menus and so on it's just great and it still doesn't affect the sound at all I wasn't sure if there might be any feedback any whine or anything like that from the the power drain from this LCD but it sounds perfect I've installed a pro sound mod like I did on the other one I did a video recently in the bottom and I've got these cool little funky button set in there as well a brand new replacement white shell from deadpan robot and the display although it's smaller it came with this screen cover which has got a slightly smaller aperture on there so it means that the display doesn't look as out of place as it could do so for me this is perfect as i say doing the modification itself <laughs> was kind of tricky but once i got there in the end i'm really really happy with the result didn't involve much in the way of cutting out the shell or anything like that which is always welcome now i would get another one of these and make a second game boy however here's the twist it's like an arms race with these things at the moment so i've gone years and years installing the backlight panels and then all of a sudden it seems like you're finding out about a new display one's coming out for the game boy color one's out for the game boy pocket one's now out for the dmg great i'll get that one and since i installed this one and when i was getting ready to make the video i found out that there's another one on the market that's got a slightly larger display and you can actually adjust the palette by adjusting the contrast wheel so I had to have one of those as well and I've got one on order when it comes I'll install it probably do a video of that and then do a comparison and see how they go but for now this one more than suits my needs for making music this is the perfect Game Boy for me with this color scheme um, with all the brand new parts and with the display it feels like a completely modern machine but in the hands it feels like the same Game Boy I enjoyed all those years ago